and this is Three of Skins Knit and Crochet Podcast, episode 120. And I'm Lisa. I'm Chris. Hello. How are y'all doing? Uh, Chris, would you like to talk about what's going on with your skirt? I'm making a skirt. Like, <laughs> I don't know. That's where you put it. I did not put it over there. And there's going to be some panels. Four, six. It's a long story. But basically, there's going to be two shorter panels and two longer panels. And so I might make the longer panels. I might split them into two so I don't have to do a long starting chain because I hate that. Yeah, what do you mean longer panels and stuff? Are you doing like a step pattern skirt again or no. are you talking width? So this, this is width. So this is one panel, right? But there's going to be two panels that are twice this width. Oh, okay. So instead of making a long panel that's twice the width, I'm going to make two. So, but those two panels will then get seamed so that they still function as one long panel. Um, so it's going to be a, a, what is it called? handkerchief hem skirt so here's one completed panel um what had happened was the whole thing was supposed to be this light purple mm -hmm. but i didn't have enough of that to, well actually i had enough of that i probably just had exactly enough to make the skirt but i wanted to make a matching top so i had to bring in some other yarn so i didn't eat up all my light purple making the skirt so and i went through some changes because Constructing the skirt side to side at first, and so my stripes were going to be vertical, and it just, I didn't want vertical stripes. It's really what it all comes down to, that I kept trying to make vertical stripes work when they just, I just knew they wouldn't. So I reconfigured the skirt so as to be able to use horizontal stripes, and I am a much happier camper now. <laughs> I didn't know you had so much of that particular yarn. What yarn is that? This is Nasley Gellin. Uh, crochet thread, I believe it's been discontinued, so I scooped it up on clearance from Universal. Uh, so I think it worked out to like a dollar a ball. Wow. I was very excited. So yes, I have quite a bit of this <laughs> in a number of colors. And to tell you the truth, I wish I had more. Um, because when I bought it, I had like this vague idea that I wanted to use crochet thread. But I hadn't worked with crochet thread yet and I didn't know if I would like it. And now I know I like it. <laughs> so, but we can have a conversation about crochet thread. But I'm using a 1.75 millimeter. This is my first time using one of my like tiny little steel books. But you know what? Crochet is crochet. It really, it doesn't matter. And so I'm just, it, it's going just fine. And I really, I had it folded so you can see those creases. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm almost done with my second panel. I have to do the gray stripe and another purple stripe at the top. And then I will have two parts of a skirt. Let me ask you though, <laughs> um, so you ripped out what you did before or is yeah. it just a change? No, I, I ripped out some of it. Yeah. So basically I was originally working like this. So if you can imagine okay. one panel going across this way. Um, and so I had like maybe up to here in just the light purple. So I ripped back added the dark purple and now this is the direction that I'm working. So this will be the length of the skirt. Mm -hmm. Well, this will be the length of the skirt. Um, as opposed to previously it was going to be the width of the skirt. Um, and the stitch I'm doing is actually linen stitch working with extended single crochets instead of regular single crochets. And uh, I don't know if you can see that it just gives you a longer V and so it just gives you a nice little texture yeah but it's very subtle and it's very simple um and that that's what i like i like not having to do a lot to get an effect and i think it's cute i agree so it's it's just this is a labor of love <laughs> you think it's not what it is um but i don't know anytime I start thinking about, oh, this is taking so long. And I'm like, 
So what? Like, so long compared to what? I'm not on a deadline. I'm working on my own schedule, thankfully. Um, but you just kind of have it in your head. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm used yeah. to hearing other people complain about how long it takes to make something. And you kind of fall into that pattern. But it's just like, I don't mind. Like, I'll have a skirt when I have a skirt. And I, I enjoy the process. So... I have to just kind of get out of that mindset that says you're supposed to work faster or produce a certain number of things in a year or whatever or in a week. <laughs> and, um, and I'm just, it just kind of, every time it crops up, I just kind of like, you know, pull myself up short, like, nope, we're not even going to start thinking like that because we're just doing a thing that we, I'm doing a thing. I don't know why I'm using we. <laughs> the real we. I'm just doing a thing that I enjoy and I'm just letting myself enjoy the process and not applying that that absolutely non-existent temporal pressure on myself. No, I see what you mean though because I don't know where the pressure comes from. I don't know if our society in general just moves fast or everything has to be the internet go, has go, 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 go. It because it, it is the case that for some reason whatever we see repeated we start to believe. Mm -hmm. And it, it doesn't have to make sense. It can defy all logic, yeah. you know, see flat earth. Um, <laughs> but when you just hearing something enough can convince people. So if you just think that when you're making things, you're meant to work fast, you're meant to produce mm -hmm. instead of create, create kind of has that time built into it where it's okay to take the time that it takes but produce mm -hmm. you need something to show right now and unfortunately what the internet shows us is a lot of production and not so much with the creation and so i'm trying to just focus on creating and really just enjoying the fact that i i do have the space to just make something because i enjoy making something so what's it like working now? Because I'm going to tell you the truth. We said don't work fine. I know. Because you're a big whiny baby. I am a big whiny baby. <laughs> and that's that's absolutely true. I would whine after every stitch. <laughs> oh my gosh. When you were doing the peplum on your skirt. Yes. It was just like, are you kidding? After every stitch, I whined ever so slightly. <laughs> this row has this many stitches. It keeps going. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let me tell you. <laughs> it, it, wasn't, it wasn't my best hour <laughs> but crochet thread is i believe it's finer than i know it's finer than um fingering, fingering. It's, it's is it about a lace weight because i thought it was Although finer than a lace say, weight honestly the lace weight silk i just made that tank top out of was finer mm -hmm. um i did use a bigger hook just because i mentioned i was working with a dark yarn so i needed the stitches big enough to see them um these eyes are aging <laughs> but um, I'm using a smaller hook, but I would say it's a denser yarn just because it's cotton mm -hmm. as opposed to silk. So that, that fine filament in silk, it just worked out to be a little bit thinner. Yeah. But um, because crochet thread is typically cotton, um, it, is, it, it still has a little bit of heft to it. And I, I just, I don't know, I don't have any trouble at all working with it. It's, it's got a, a nice, a, a tight enough twist that, you know, I don't have too many issues with like splitting or anything. And I don't know. I like it just fine. I don't know why crochet thread is always cotton though. It's often cotton and it's often solid colors. I find it's hard to find multicolor um, crochet thread. You can find some, but it does tend to be overwhelmingly um, no, you're right. I'm just thinking about it. Now. Solid colors. And I don't, it's a little frustrating because I, the appeal of crochet thread for me is the gauge, but there just isn't enough variety there. So I only use crochet thread, but I'm also, the crochet thread has me wanting to work more with lace weight yarns just because I can get more fibers and more choices in color. So now that I know I like working at this gauge, I'll be using some combination of both lace weight yarns and crochet thread. And I absolutely love the fabric you're producing in this in this yarn. It's, it's beautiful. So that that's my only quibble with with crochet thread. I don't know why it's like so weirdly monolithic. 
And you can get like a lot of white or off-white crochet thread. So you can get bigger skeins or cones or whatever. But if you want colors, they're usually also going to be small. I don't I'm trying to think because I remember when, when Grandma would make doilies out of crochet thread. Sometimes she would get thread that ombre. And yeah. I'm trying to think what brand that was. I, I it, don't know. I'd be surprised if it wasn't Annie's. Just because... She's probably getting that over. Yeah. <laughs> and that's probably Maybe what they had. there to see if they still have that own brain kind. And so I've seen, like I said, I've seen a little of that. But can we get a little more variety in crochet thread? What's, what's happening? What's that about? What's going on? I'm confused. We need to write the manager. <laughs> <laughs> a sternly worded email. Anyway. <laughs> but... Liking my crochet thread and kind of wishing I had more. Okay, cool. You go, all right? I'm exploring the depths Wait, of DKness. Like, and is it really different with needles? Because you're always looping the yarn over the needles. It's a little different from crochet. So does it matter what size needles you're working on? I guess it really doesn't. And I do like working smaller projects on finer needles. I think it's just like a stumbling block in my mind. And then I start calculating out the number of stitches and it really like perturbs me. But whatever you make is one stitch at a time. It's true. It's true. And I think it's, it's the production pressure mm -hmm. that works on me that way too. Because I have, I've moved down from worsted. I'm, I'm in <laughs> DK now. I'm thinking about sport weight. So, you know... <laughs> Like I will get there. I, oh I will get there. But I really think it's a speed thing. I think like because you go, you guys always said I was the slow. I am the slowest knitter, and it's true. I am a slow, slow knitter. But you know what? Is it that you were slow mechanically, or is it that you weren't putting regular time in on your project? And I think it was both. <laughs> because I feel like you know you you tended to let projects sit for a little while your yeah. your work method has changed some it has so that now you you put more time on a project daily and you finished that and, whole skirt that's true and i'm not really a daily knitter still i will have bursts of activity when i put a lot of time into a project and then i'll back off of it or if i come to a, a fork in the road that will also stop my work because i have to figure out what I'm going to do before I can move, you know, before I can move forward. So, yeah, I, I do have lulls in my work. I think it for you, a lot of it is scheduling. <laughs> some, some of it is. Because yeah. I have been trying to work on my skirt every day. Update. Mm. So, yeah, I remember I had about some neck pain. <laughs> and I decided I was going to have to make some changes to my crochet practice to avoid such an outcome in the future. <laughs> Things have been going so much better. Um, breaks are just now part of my crocheting. So I no longer crochet for like an hour or two hours in one stretch without resting. Um, and so I just, I, I might decide like say I'm gonna do a certain number of rows or a certain period of time. But either way, I, I stop at that marker and I not only stop, but I stretch a little bit and just rest the arm and give the opportunity to recover a little bit before I go back to crochet. Um, if I do have some pain, which is just way less frequent now, mm -hmm. I stop. <laughs> I don't just crochet through it, which I know uh, it sounds crazy to be speaking about that like a novel thing, but it, it is. <laughs> um, I've also been just exercising a little bit. So like when I walk on the treadmill now, I, I carry dumbbells with me, just kind of strengthening my arm a little bit uh, to just get the muscle kind of up to where I need it to be so that I can, I don't have to like slow way, way down on my crocheting. Um, and I'm still working on the ergonomics part of it. I'm still trying to figure out where and how I should be situated in order to crochet. Cause now I know that as great as it is for watching television, my sofa is a bit of a demon chair when it comes to crochet. It's just not positioned correctly because it's a it's a recliner seat 
And so in its upright position, it's not 90 degrees. It still reclines a little bit. And then the seat is also kind of like a bucket seat. So I'm just not sitting straight when I'm in that chair. Um, it's, it's less than ideal for crocheting in. So now I know, don't crochet on the sofa. <laughs> I have to find someplace else, some other sort of seat um, to, to crochet. And sometimes I literally just sit on the floor in front of the sofa and that's actually more comfortable than sitting on the sofa. I was gonna say that sitting on the floor actually and holding yourself up it, it does, it's it's better for long periods of doing some sort of work like that. So I've been addressing all three of the areas I, I stated before, working breaks in, getting some exercise from my arm and addressing the ergonomics and things are going so much better. <laughs> you know what, you have not said your arm hurt in a long time, that's right, oh my gosh. So. Just thought I'd let y'all know. Change is possible. And I'm I'm still making a skirt. Like it's happening. The fabric is growing. So a yeah. skirt and crochet thread. <laughs> On 1.75 millimeter needles. You go girl. Alright. Just just a tiny little update there. So speaking of not getting very much work done on a project, my head has been scattered in multiple directions. <laughs> for the past couple of weeks. So I I finished the second panel, my second side panel, and news alert, it's the same length as the first side panel. Imagine if you count your rows as you go, <laughs> you, can, you can make two things the same length. Imagine, imagine, indeed. Imagine, yes. Imagine if 10 equals 10. But you know, you know what though? You know how sometimes you get directions in a in a pattern that say, hey, knit this section or crochet this section until it's X inches high. Right. I'm starting to think that what I need to do is use my row gauge, tell myself how many rows that are X in number X of inches, inches, and then count my rows as I go rather than using the tape measure. Because it's gonna depend on where I measure that thing. Whether or not I want to get up and lay it flat on a table, because you know, I'm in the bucket seat in the recliner and I'm going to lay it on my lap as well as I can and go, mm -hmm. yeah, that seems to be seven inches. And it could be seven inches or it could be six and a quarter. Or it could be, you know, <laughs> seven and a half. Fascinating. I know. I'm, I'm <laughs> discovering things, all right? <laughs> the scales are falling off my eyes. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be my procedure going forward. I'm going to use my row gauge and calculate out how many rows it's going to take to get to that number of inches. And then after I've arrived at that number of rows, I will measure it and see if that is indeed true because unfortunately gauge can change as you work on a project. So you'll still need to measure a little bit, but I'm not going to get, let the tape measure be the bossy. <laughs> All right, yep. Take measure in the boss of me. Mm, go figure. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's done. What I need to do now is cast on the color work panels and get them going. And then I'll just be able to sew it up and do my edgings. But um, that I will probably be getting to this week. What I have been putting time into is I have been just cogitating. I got curious about English Taylor sold, shoulders. I almost said shoulder, soldiers, but I mean shoulders. <laughs> so I found a whole bunch of articles about how to actually achieve that in knitting. Now, basically what that means is you, instead of, you see how the seam of my t-shirt sits approximately in the middle of the shoulder? What that means is you move that seam further back so that the front shoulder piece actually wraps around your shoulder and it just makes for a more nicely fitted in the garment, in the shoulder garment, because most of our garments hang from our shoulders anyway. So if the shoulder fits well, you have a higher chance of the rest of the garment fitting well. So I'm trying to figure out how to make that happen in 
in my uh, in my mitts, particularly since I want to do a cardigan. And, you know, cardigans are notorious for slipping off your shoulders. I figured if I did an English tailored shoulder, I could just create a cardigan that really just stays on very nicely. So, you know, once you jump down a rabbit hole, what's down there? More rabbit holes. <laughs> that, 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 that's what's down there though. So I, saw in one of the articles that, hey, you know, you may not want to pick up your edges and knit them. You might want to knit your ribbing separately and backstitch it on, which was like, my mind went <laughs> And the person who wrote that article said, hey, that technique is detailed in this book, The Big Book of Knitting. So it actually wasn't my fault. What was it your fault? You ordered them from thrift books. Okay. I got some books from thrift books. I think I showed you on the last episode that I got some books from thrift books, right? And so then mom got some books from thrift books. And she said, oh, that was my fault. I incepted her. I made her get books from thrift books. And then Lisa's books came and they came in the thrift books wrapper. And I was like, this is not my fault. And she said, oh, it absolutely is your fault. But it wasn't. Someone online told you to buy that. But I got yeah. them from thrift books. And you and put thrift books in my mind. You was already going to buy that book. You was going to get it from somewhere. <laughs> okay. I vindicated. That's all I have to say. Go ahead on. But not only does it have a, a section about, you know, installing your ribbing and whatnot that way, which I think I'm going to try on my top. Uh, detailed ways to do pockets, put in zippers. Oh, oh, this is an old book. It was originally published in German. Uh, but in 1999, I believe, it was published again in English, and I got one of the 1999 copies. So much work about details of, you, you see how Crystal's all into it now? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm going to Go say, ahead, you know, I'm very brightly colored as all. Well. It caught my eye. I share that kind of thing. It's fine. <laughs> I do not get keep. <laughs> so I will be doing my ribbing that away. And then... Um, I got this book called Top Down by Isolde Teague. No, not by Isolde Teague, by Elizabeth Doherty. <laughs> you two completely different people. I know, but you know what? Anyway, conflated. I had taken a class with Jacqueline Keyslack uh, just recently. I believe it was oh, two weeks ago now? Yes. Not, about two weeks ago. And she was mentioning that there was a really interesting uh, way to do top-down sweaters in this book. And the book is actually called Top Down Reimagining Set-In Sleeve Design. And I personally like a set-in sleeve. So I will be reading this book to really refine my set-in sleeves. Because what I've noticed is, particularly when I use patterns, some of the grading is not all that great for the larger sizes. And one of the things that happens is, as the circumference increases, sometimes things go wrong in this area. The armhole gets real deep. <laughs> it even happens in Raglan, so I really want to understand the relationship between the proportion of the bust and the proportion of the arm. Because just because I have a bigger bust doesn't mean I need a basketball-sized armhole. And what I'd like to be able to do is when I take a look at the at a pattern that I want to use before I use it, I can see, oh, that's going to be a big deep old armhole. And I want to be able to, to fix that and keep the rest of the pattern intact. But that that's some of what's been going on with me. So I've been kind of deep in bookland. Also, I've been working on... Not at all because of me. Thank you. Not even a little bit. Do you have specific recommendations for specific individuals? And either of those individuals was me. Okay. You didn't say get a book. All right. I'm, I'm going to give you I that. I say get a book. And I say get that book. And I say go to the books. None of it. None of it was me. Mm -hmm. Okay. I still feel incepted. It's my emotional perception But not accepted by me. That's oh. the whole thing. Uh, okay. Maybe. 
we can we can we can talk about that later. <laughs> so I've been working on our website. We have a brand new website. It's called Three of Skeins. If you guys, any of you have been visiting our old website, a knit sheep, that's gonna go down shortly. If it hasn't gone down yeah, already. The 30th, right? Yeah. It, it's down. <laughs> um you can find us now on threeofskeins.com. Yippee Kaye. Ignore the blog. We're gonna have to write new posts for it. I thought I'd be able to ship our old posts over. The pictures came over, nothing else did. So ignore the blog for right now. The site is still under construction. The site is still under construction, but it exists. Yay! I had a very bad experience with WordPress in the past. And I feel like I have overcome something by being able to make a WordPress site now. It's much better now. <laughs> so I have some classes up on the website. Ah. So I have some classes coming up. Uh, May 18th, I will be doing, now these are Zoom classes. So you can Zoom in from wherever. Uh, on May 18th, I'm doing a Sweater Savvy. On June 1st, got another sweater savvy coming up. Uh, June 8th, I'm doing tailored raglans, mastering custom fit top down raglan sweaters. And this June, I am offering a uh, top down t shirt series. We'll do four classes over the time you'll learn how to make a top down raglan tee because. Who wouldn't want one of those for summer? Hello. So if you check out our website, you'll see all the details on the site and you will receive your uh, Zoom link after you sign. But that, that's what's going on on the website right now. I'm very excited actually. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's all I have for today. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and I will see you guys next time. Right. Oh, like and subscribe. And turn on. Yes, please do like and subscribe. You know what? We are at 992 subscribers. We can see the finish line. <laughs> Thanks, guys.